You take a look at the last two games. Man, negative 80 point difference. The last two times the Florida State has faced Clemson. We knew it'd be an uphill climb. You got to take care of the football. The Seminoles did not, and they paid the price. Look, let's talk about this Clemson team. There's a lot of questions that they had to answer. Coming off a win versus North Carolina, is this team for real? Uh, who can knock them off? Could it be Florida State? EJ, you believe for a little while, but they put that to rest. Well, look, I picked the Noles because I'm a Noel, okay? But <laughs> <laughs> let's first say that. But Clemson is the best team, if not, you know, beside them in Alabama. They're the top two teams in the country. These guys have the best players in the country. They have, I think, the best. It's what they do, in the right? I mean, this so is what they do. Of course, they had a, a, a hard game versus North Carolina, but I also think they're a good ball club. So. This is what Clemson needed to do. This is a statement game that they should have had, and what better moment to do it against Florida State. And, and you look at what the offense was able to do. It could have been a lot worse. They're on the goal line, got stopped on fourth down. They tried their new heavy package, probably normally score there, miss a field goal, and then another time in the red zone that they weren't able to capitalize the way, the way they want to. So it could have been a lot worse. I think this Clemson offense is just right there, and, and we knew it was a matter of time. We, we see the weapons, the pieces that they have, it's just they're, they're too talented to not be doing this on a regular basis. If there's one team in the Atlantic that can catch Clemson or that Clemson knows could be right there neck and neck with them, it's Florida State. And they're trying like mad to pounce on them and beat on them and put their, neck on, put their foot on their neck and hold them down to where they got no confidence in that game. And it's going to take a while before they have enough confidence to go knock that bunch off. Now, I do want to go back to something Emac said as far as them doing this <clears> every game. I think that's tough to put on any team, to go out there and beat everybody by four touchdowns, five touchdowns. And I know what you meant by that, big dog, but at the same time, I, I think the, the nation kind of freaks out when we see these guys only win by a touchdown or yeah. three points. or yeah. they, they find a way to win. Everybody, They're going to get the best from everybody each and every week. So yeah. sometimes they're going to have rough ones like Carolina, and then they're going to have ones like they did versus Florida State. Yeah, and I think, again, just when you look at last year, this is about when they started beating people so bad. Right, and the right. schedule is, is very similar. Now, I think Louisville's a little bit, a lot bit, better than last year. So I don't think we're going to see something similar to a 77, 78 point yeah. score that they did last year. But this is about the time that those Clemson Tigers start really clicking. Uh, how about this? Travis Etienne, the seventh <laughs> player in program history there at Clemson to eclipse the 3,000 wow. rushing yard mark. Take a look at the list there. Some names to stick out. CJ Spiller, CJ, Andre Ellington, Wayne Train, Train, baby. Wow. It's a lot of name. stars right there. So great company right there. Great company, no question. I want to kind of look ahead here quickly with Clemson. We saw how it played out Louisville versus Wake Forest. Louisville is a team that's proven that they can put points on the board. I'm not saying pick this as the sexy upset pick, but could this be a game? Could this be a true challenge for Clemson on the road there? Well, when you when you saw what Louisville did last week and you're wondering, well, could they do it again? They start doing it again with the, with uh, Mikhail Cunningham. He looks like a million dollars. Then he goes out, and then here comes this freshman shows up. He starts playing his tail off. Is that they, a testament they, to they, Satterfield's Oh, system? it's Satter, yeah. it, it's Satterfield. I mean, that – that was two very well coached football teams. Now I know defensively it didn't look like it, but but they uh, they're getting coached extremely well. They're doing a lot of the right things. Um, just just think about taking over a team that was what two and ten last yeah. year at Louisville. It's unbelievable. And they're doing what they're doing right now. Yeah. That's coaching. That's culture. I mean, I don't like using the word culture much because I think yeah. it's overused. But, you know, something changed in a big way. Coach. And it had to do with him. You're exactly right. I mean, we're seeing buy-in from a group of young men that see Coach Satterfield. They're buying into what he, whatever he's implemented when it was in the offseason or now in the season as far as their game preparation. Each and every week, they've gotten better. And I think they're only going to continue to scale in that way. I, I'm going to ask a question I did not expect to be asking here in mid-October. Is Louisville the second best team in the ACC? Tonight, yes. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a different answer. Wow. <laughs> But isn't that kind of wild that that's where we're at right now yeah. talking about this team? Ooh, they look like it to me. Yeah, they do. I don't know. But about I mean, Wake Forest is. isn't too far off either. You know, I mean, they lost by three at the end of the day. Yeah. So I still think Wake is right there on, on the cusp. But, you know, Louisville's going to have that tiebreaker over many ways. Yeah. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.